In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. I want to wish everyone a very happy Easter, happy Sunday. Also, happy Mother's Day to all mothers and spiritual mothers. We'll have a blessing at the end of Mass for all of you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading, Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the 12 called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task. Whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Peter. 
Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith. But for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not what I have told you, that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, 
and the Father is in me. The words that I speak to you do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. I feel like this morning I'm more uh, aware of the beauty of being able to speak right after the words of the Gospel. And Jesus says some really beautiful things today, and I'm hesitant to say too much um, for fear that you might hear something other than what Jesus is saying. So um, I don't want you to be distracted. But I would like just to choose a couple phrases uh, to reflect on, maybe one from the beginning, the middle, and the end of the gospel this morning. And I just hope that you can receive Jesus' words with great affection and sincerity. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. One of the greatest compliments uh, you can give to another human being is to tell that other human being that when you're with them, you really feel at home. Really feel at home with you. It's one of the best things you could say to someone. Because it means that they make you feel comfortable. They make you feel warm. They make you feel safe. I imagine if um, you're on a first date and the woman says to the man, you really make me feel at home. The man's doing a really good job. Jesus introduces this concept of being comfortable and safe to his disciples to remind them that they have a heavenly home. This place of rest that was a predestined for them since their, since their first breath. A place of belonging and peace. And I think in this conversation that Jesus has with the disciples that he wants them to know the comfort and peace of heaven. And this is, some might say that uh, this is his mission to bring heaven to us. This passage is often read at funerals chosen by family members because it expresses um, the fact that their hearts are troubled and Jesus is trying to bring them comfort. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus says. Faith in God, have faith also in me. And if the family member doesn't choose it, oftentimes I feel like the priest will choose it. Because I know for myself, I look at the, continue, the passage continues, and I, and I look at it like um, from an aspect of confusion. Like Thomas expresses great confusion. He says, Master, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? I think sometimes family members, those who are grieving, have the same sense. Same sense of confusion. What are you doing? How could you possibly take this person away from me? I don't know where they're going. I don't know the way. Thomas expresses what's on his heart to Jesus. And so the, the person who is grieving has that same sense. Confusion continues with Philip after Jesus says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will know my Father also. Philip says, Master, show us the Father. That'll be enough for us. 
Just, just show me. And we'll be satisfied. If this ever happens to you, but in prayer, you ask for something. And um, you don't hear anything. Silence. Or you ask for something and God gives you something else. I find myself oftentimes uh, with this mentality. And up and down in my life, uh, it's true. I remember asking uh, for good grades. And um, I got pretty good grades, but um, I didn't get like the best grades. Or I ask like, I wish my family was different, you know? My family didn't change. I wish my friends were different. I wish my life was different. Here we are in quarantine, and uh, my, I'm sure I'm not alone, but my life has been uh, a little turned upside down. God, I wish my life was different. It's been harder to sleep, actually, for me uh, during these last weeks. Um, I'm not on a schedule anymore, so um, midnight will come, and I'm like wide awake. 1 a.m., 2 a.m. This is when normal people sleep, God. Don't you know that? I just want to sleep. <laughs> then I wake up at 6, awake again. I'm like, what the heck? So you ask God for something, and he doesn't give it to you. What do we do with that? I think um, in those moments, the Father, God, says, here. Here's Jesus. I know you want sleep. Here's Jesus. I know you want your life to be different. Here's Jesus. Immediately, you say to the Father, I didn't ask for Jesus. I want sleep. I want this to be better. I want peace. I want a certain sense of joy. I want comfort. I want warmth. I want safety. The Father says, here's Jesus. So you can understand that the Father wants to give you Jesus. And as we continue reading, we come to realize that what does Jesus want? Jesus wants to give you the Father. And so there's this dy dy dynamic that uh, everything in the heart of the Father is the Son. And everything in the Son, everything in the heart of the Son wants to unite us with the Father. So when Philip asks Jesus, just show us the Father, that'll be enough for us. Jesus responds, have I been with you for so long a time and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. If you want to know what God is like, we look at Jesus. This is a basic tenet of the Christian faith. When we look upon the face of Jesus, we look upon the face of God. You know, when Jesus loved someone in the Bible, they could feel it. That it was somehow different than any other human person loving them. It far surpassed human love. Why? Because when he loved you, God loved you. When you look at the crucifix, I always look at the crucifix. We look at the crucifix, and it's very common to say, wow, Jesus loves me. 
Jesus loves me. You really see the love of Jesus in the crucifix. When you look at the crucifix, you see the love of the Father. You know, many are tempted to believe that, oh, Jesus loves us. It's quite clear. If that really happened, it's quite clear Jesus loves us. But the Father, the Father's really mad. He's really angry. He wants to zap us. But thanks be to God, Jesus says, no, 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 don't zap them, zap me. That is a lie. That is a total lie. What kind of understanding of the Father is that? That's not how it is. The Father isn't crazy. He doesn't delight in watching his son suffer. He himself suffers on the cross. God the Father loves us to death. This is the gospel. So we too pray today in the words of Philip, show us the Father. Show us the Father, Jesus, and that will be enough for us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we believe that God, our Father, has sent his Son to reveal his love to us. With trust and confidence in God's goodness, let us offer our prayers to the Father. baptized with the cross of Christ into lives marked by prayer and service to those in need, following the path that leads to truth and life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders all over our country and the world to work in non-political ways for the well-being and safety of the people, turn of economic stability. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For catechumens and candidates, all seeking to celebrate the sacraments, when we can be together again, to be filled with the Spirit and be witnesses in, to Christ in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who grow crops for their livelihood, to be granted fine weather and safety in their work, and for all who are on the front lines of human care, including medical staff, store clerks, and first responders, to be granted fortitude and good health. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For those who ask for our prayers, those ill with coronavirus, and for all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, that they may find hope, joy, and healing, including Alex Garan, Joe Flanagan, Genevieve Kamens. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved departed, marked with the saving cross of Christ, to find eternal life in God's presence, including Mario Diagostino, Sandy Silvestri, John Patrick Taphorn, Rosemary Shea, Richard Pesca, Rosemary Miskey, mother of Carol Bowler. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also remember all of the mothers of our community, um, godmothers, grandmothers, spiritual mothers, those with us and those who have passed. Gratitude for their lives. We may learn from their, their Christian example. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, hear our prayers and grant us all that we need through Christ our Lord. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Blessed is 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. But this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's really a joy to um, impart this blessing upon all mothers this day. And this is an unforeseen time where we can't really be as close as we want to our mothers, but we do believe that God um, has great power to be close to those um, we love the most. And so we give thanks to our mothers this day, uh, for all of our mothers here, most especially. Um, and we ask God to bless you abundantly. O God, author and sustainer of human life, our every blessing comes from you. You welcome our simple prayers, especially by those who bless your holy name. Grant that our mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, spiritual mothers, that all mothers may live in reliance on your goodness and in thankfulness to you. Give to them the joyful reassurance that you are always near to, to protect them. Defend them from every evil. Be their companion along their pathway through life. And welcome them one day into the joys of, into their, of your eternal home. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.